Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about something that honestly is on everyone's mind. We constantly get this question, and, and we're going to look into it a little bit. And that is, where are all the bikes? You've probably seen other videos about it. You're obviously having issues getting other things, you know, PlayStation or all that kind of new tech is all hard to come by. And the supply chain is the problem. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. That's the short answer. But most people want a little more information. So hopefully I will clarify a little bit how this is occurring. So as you guess, this story starts back in the beginning of 2020, when the pandemic was just beginning. Obviously, everything was fine and dandy. Then all of a sudden, a global pandemic hit. Places shut down, lockdowns happened. You couldn't do much except for go outside. In turn, very quickly after this, there was a big rush for bikes. People wanted to get out and stay local, and biking was a very popular activity, especially mountain biking. Luckily, some brands ordered more parts. Some people saw this happening very quickly. Trek happened to be one of the brands. Shimano has said this themselves, that in April of 2020, Trek increased their order amount instead of decreasing it like many of the other manufacturers. This allowed Trek to get ahead of the parts, but it just wasn't enough. As the pandemic shut things down, obviously, it sounds easy to just get a part from here to there, but we have to keep going further and further back. As you order a part, it comes from a factory somewhere in China or Taiwan, or it could be in the North American area. You know, any part comes from anywhere. It really doesn't matter. But before that part's got, it literally has to go all the way back to the, the raw materials, the mining, the production of the raw plastic pellets. And these are always made in a different area than the part itself. It is very rare for a product to be manufactured from the raw materials all the way through to the final product in the same area. What happens is you actually have buyers buying these raw materials to build their products. So as the shipping issues due to shutdowns increased, you know, this includes ships being literally locked down, unloading warehouses and semi-trucks all being shut down for COVID. With the demand really high, nothing shipping, it just takes a toll on it. And it adds up and adds up and adds up, even all the way back to, say, a mine shuts down for the raw materials for aluminum. So now there's an aluminum shortage. For a while there, Coca-Cola had an aluminum shortage and couldn't make enough cans, so they removed select products from their manufacturing I'm focused on just, say, key flavors. Don't know if anyone noticed that, but it happened. You went to the grocery store, and they really just had Coke and Diet Coke, and that was about it. They didn't have too many other flavors. So you hear about it with oil shortages. You hear about it gas shortages. These are all major ones. You don't hear about plastic shortages. You did hear about cardboard shortages. Amazon was running low mid to late 2020 when everyone was ordering everything online. Well, not everything is always in stock. Cardboard is not always in stock. And even if it was, now they've run low because they're shipping more packages and all of a sudden you have zero product left. Now the cardboard factory was shut down for two weeks due to a you know, COVID outbreak, and then the semi-drivers can't get to it because they also had it. And they're already backed up because they already had COVID two weeks ago as well. So now they're two weeks behind. And very, very quickly, everyone is behind. I know, it's a lot. It, it honestly is. Um, it's hard to comprehend how quick we're able to actually do it on a normal year. How we're able to get these products from one side of the world all the way to the other side of the world so quickly is honestly impressive and we're so used to walking in and being able to get that kind of stuff it's a bit of a shock to the system to see that so as the virus expanded and changed things started opening things started relaxing so you thought okay we'll start catching back up but in second and third world countries vaccination rates were actually still super super low 
Vietnam had a huge outbreak in the end of 2021 and shut down pretty much all shoe manufacturing. And they make shoes for everyone. And I'm talking Nike, New Balance, everyone comes out of Vietnam for shoes. So now there is a shoe delay, a shoe shortage. They can't keep up with the demand. Plus, there is no product to be had. And then on top of that, the shipping delays again. All these shipping companies are months if not years behind getting it. In a recent podcast, the RockShox SRAM team said they've never had this many new products sitting in a warehouse waiting to go out. Unfortunately, that warehouse is at the manufacturing facility all the way in Taiwan or wherever that part is. Instead of being ready to ship in, you know, the local warehouses, they are stuck so far back, you know, it's unbelievable. They're ready, they're ready to go, but... The lineup to get onto these shipping containers is huge. And then once they do get on these shipping ta- containers, it's even worse because now there's a backlog of ships. We've all seen the news reports of them being unloaded in the States or even going through customs there. Most ships coming from um, Asian countries go through customs at LA and then they go up to Canada. So you can't even bypass that little area just for customs they have to touch or at least speak to someone there before they can move on up to vancouver so there's a backlog of unloading and then there's a trucker shortage and that is inflated by the fact that some of them don't want to get vaccines so now there's less trucks going but there's also people who did get the vaccine and still got sick and still had to get away for two weeks or a week and you can't go anywhere you can't get these parts The only way you can is with money. And some companies can afford to pay and get their parts here faster and eat the costs to get that product out. But the majority of companies cannot. Obviously, we've seen huge price increases over the past couple of years. And this is to compensate for drastically increased shipping prices. It's kind of getting out of control. I've heard rumors that shipping prices have gone from $2,000 a container, upwards of $20,000 a container, depending on what you're shipping. And it seems like it's a wild west of whoever pays the most gets their shipping going first. So you just get bumped further back depending on who wants their product fastest. There is obviously a limit to what you can raise prices to. So it's a delicate game of can I ship this for this price increase the price that much to help offset that and sell it and we're at a pretty big pinnacle i think much higher and you're going to price a lot of people out overall that long list of items is why you don't have a bike i see bike etas all the way till 2025 i see cancellations all the time The big companies seem to be doing okay. I would highly recommend you getting an order in for a bike, getting a reservation, or picking one up right now, even if you're not ready for it. Because otherwise, you could be waiting a good year to three years for select bikes. And that is the straight-up truth. If I were to order a replacement Fuel-EX 9.8, it will be late or mid-next year before I see it. Um... There's other ones coming in before then, but people have their names on it. People have put money down and they say that I will take it, whether it's in January of 2023 or spring or fall. It doesn't matter. I'm taking the next one. So then the supply chain is still eaten up, waiting for these bikes to come in and you get pushed further and further down the line. Overall, bikes are shipping much better than they were. We are seeing a lot more product roll in. It is definitely better than it was, but there is still huge delays. And a lot of the time, it's just uncertainties. And that's the worst part. It's like super uncertain when your bike's actually coming. Santa Cruz, for instance, they kind of update everyone every four months or so with what bikes they should expect. But throughout that whole four month wait, those bikes which were expected could get delayed up to four months so it's not really that accurate trek is pretty accurate they get dates but they can fluctuate a little bit 
honestly, in the past few months, I've seen a few come in early, which is a nice little surprise. None of them crazy early, but every once in a while, you see one a month sooner than it was supposed to. That still doesn't help for the bikes, which are one year to two years out. You know, a month isn't going to catch up super fast. But eventually, the demand will dwindle a little bit, and then there'll be more bikes available. Realistically, I see a lot of the bikes over the $2,000 range being the hardest ones to get. And like I say, I think that's just a parts issue. If demand of other products starts slowing down too as normalcy comes back, we will start seeing bikes faster and ETAs bumping up. As people order things less from Amazon or online services and shipping companies are less busy, they will be able to pick up things from containers much faster and things will start rolling faster. So as quick as it happened, I think it could quite quickly undo. It just needs to get over this hump of the last kind of phase of coronavirus and everything that's going on. Obviously now we have a bit of conflict in the east with Russia, Ukraine. I don't see much effect on bikes for that not that i have knowledge of there is not many bike products coming out of that area if anything you could potentially see an uptick because with sanctions going on potentially russia will get shipped zero bikes and therefore more bikes will become available for other places how someone would allocate that i have no idea good luck to the global shipping managers at the bike companies and all those companies, do you hold them and wait and see if this fizzles out in a month? Or is this something that's going to be slowed down for years to come? It's really unpredictable. And dates fluctuate like crazy on our shipping sheets. And yeah, that's my take on it. Honestly, I do a lot of weird research. I like to follow up and see where it's coming from. So this is a pretty accurate description of why your bike's not here it comes down to they could simply be waiting for the raw material from the mine in northern canada to be dug out and then shipped off to china to be smelted down to be turned into the raw materials and that there is already delayed and then it's got to get delayed all the way back to you and that's why we're seeing one year waits because it used to be fast and now it's not well, that was my rant. Um, hopefully that was helpful or insightful to some people. Um, as you can see, this is an older video. I'm on the Trek Remedy 9.8. The next available one of these is a complete unknown. They are officially out of 2022 models and they were shipping late into 2022. I'm hopeful they will do a big product refresh on this one for 2023. I don't know what bikes people will receive at that time, but it'll be interesting. What I do foresee is most likely a mullet bike. I'm not exactly sure on that. There is no rumors or evidence to say that. I've done a bit of research, but I see no evidence except my own thoughts. I think they have to. The Remini hasn't been updated in many years. It's kind of a one-of-a-kind bike, so why not make it the mullet bike for Trek? I just don't know what else they do with this bike. There's no reason to keep it both at 27 and a half with the way 29s handle and to keep up and fresh with the cool kids. I think a, a mullet bike with a 29 on the front would make it a cool, cool addition. I cannot wait to get back to these days where it's sunny, warm sun. Right now we are still under like an insane amount of snow, the most snow we've had since, I don't know, like the 1800s, literally. Uh, yeah let's get back out there thanks for watching enjoy the rest of the ride this one is in the classic brandon hills bit of a group ride here i don't even know what trail we're on i think this is the luckies and or this is the gun club downhill trail and i think it's lucky's leading into that this is a fantastic section if you head out burning bush the way we did and then come straight down lucky's it is fast it is flowy and it is constantly uh elevation change where for the most part you're going down 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 with these short little spurts of up and you just flow and fly throughout it 
if you haven't been out there it's super good honestly my favorite trail and you can cover like 20 kilometers in no time the way out is super fast and then somehow which is really unusual the way back is still super fast it's just this perfect grade of rolly hills on both directions anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this one um i don't think i have too much more to say we've got another remedy in front of me and a bronson so on this video we have more 27 and a half inch wheels than ever before and we'll lead in the pack here they are lightweight and easy to use i do miss it but i will do a reveal and show off the new bike it is here it is a bit of a change down you know coming from full carbon fiber bikes i'm going back to an aluminum one it's going to be really interesting to see if i notice anything weight wise it's not a huge difference but i'm intrigued to know how it feels how it just handles the corners and you can kind of throw it around it's going to be really interesting oh, yeah. hopefully we'll be able to do a group ride this year um if anyone's interested i will try and arrange one um through youtube here and see if anyone wants to come out and do a big old group ride and if you haven't been to death valley which is where we're at now we'll try and lead out there it's a a pretty cool little hump section which you can really send it and go flying and if you follow ali here it's pretty psychotic to be honest he really sends it there he goes here we go you barely need to lift up and the ground just leaves you doesn't even look it you just hover above the ground the entire way down it's pretty fun that way all right guys good luck we'll see you next time i didn't even get out i came down that first little lump yep. got a ton of speed i was like i can't hit this line i was like i can't